Okay, in the last video we talked about sequences and series, and uh, specifically we talked about the differences between them, what's a sequence versus what's a series. And we mentioned that series have uh, two sequences associated with them. There's that sequence a sub n that actually lists all the terms that are being added, and then there's also the sequence of partial sums. And in this video we're going to talk about the sequence of partial sums. So I did want to keep them separate just so that things aren't too confusing, because um, sequence of partial sums might be something that's relatively new to you. Uh, if you're first starting with Calc 2, but sequence as a series you may have seen before in earlier courses uh, way back when. So anyway, with the sequence of partial sums, so if we have a series, sum from n equals 1 to positive infinity of a sub n, so we know that that's a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus dot dot dot, there's actually an associated sequence of partial sums, and the sequence is capital S sub 1 comma capital S sub 2 comma capital S sub 3, comma, dot, dot, dot. So remember, the sequence is a list. So this here is a sequence of partial sums. And because it's a sequence, we're writing it like this. Okay? Or we could use the more compact notation like this. So we could also say this. Let me get rid of that. Uh, we could also say S sub n from n equals 1 to positive infinity. Okay, we could also write the sequence of partial sums like that. Now, what exactly is the sequence? What are these S sub n's? Well, s sub 1 is just the first term uh, a sub 1. s sub 2, so that's not very interesting, but s sub 2 is a sub 1 plus a sub 2. Okay, Or if we want to use the uh, sigma notation here, that's going to be the sum from n equals 1 to 2 of the a sub n's. So s sub 1 is just a sub 1, or n equals 1 to 1 of a sub 1. But writing that's kind of ridiculous. We would never really write that. We would just write a sub 1. Or sorry, this would be a sub n. Sorry about that. Um, but this whole thing right here just equals a sub 1. So we would never write uh, We would never write this. That's silly. But it, we could write it if we wanted to, and it would be correct. Um, it's just kind of overkill. So s sub 1 is a sub 1. s sub 2 is a sub 1 plus a sub 2, which we can write more compactly like this. And what do you think s sub 3 would be? So I'm kind of running out of room over here. So let me extend a little bit. So I'll give some space over here. So s sub 3, you may guess, is a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3. Okay, And that's we can write that more compactly as the sum from n equals 1 to 3 of a sub n. Okay, So remember, we call this a sequence of partial sums because each element in this sequence is a partial sum of this series. Okay, So this series here is really the sum from n equals 1 all the way up to positive infinity, so we're adding up all of these infinitely many values here. But if we want to take a partial sum, we would just add up and stop at some uh, one of the finite values here. So we would just add up a finite number of them. So s sub 1 is just a sub 1. s sub 2 is a sub 1 plus a sub 2. Uh, s sub 3 is a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3, and so on and so forth. So what we could say in general, and I'm totally out of room, so I'm going to come over here and get rid of this. So let's write down a general formula for that. So what we saw was um, s sub 2 equals the sum from n equals 1 to 2 of a sub n. And we saw that s sub 3 equals the sum from n equals 1 to 3 of a sub n, right? So what do you think s sub 4 would be? Well, s sub 4 would be the sum from n equals 1 to 4 of a sub n, which would be a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4. Okay, And this pattern is going to continue. So we could have 5 here, 5, and then plus a sub 5, and so on. And then this is getting really hard to read. So let's uh, stop with that. So if we get rid of all this here, um, now in general, what would s sub k be? So this is the kth partial sum. Okay, what we're going to do right here is give a form, or just to write down a little formula for the kth partial sum. Well, for the kth partial sum, we would have the sum from n equals 1 to k of a sub n. Okay, so this is always going to be a sub n here because this index right here has to correspond with this index right here. Okay, now you might be wondering. Um, well, first of all, let's analyze this just real quick. So s sub k is basically the sum of all the first k terms. Okay, so s sub, remember s sub 2 
is a1 plus a2. So if we have s sub 2, then our k is going to be 2. So this will be 2. This will be 2 up here, okay? which is what we have uh, here. Here's 2 and 2 over here. OK, so um, if we were to write this out, what would that be? So let's switch colors here, just to make this a little bit easier to read. So this would be a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus dot, dot, dot plus a sub k. So this s sub k represents the kth partial sum, which is the sum of the first k elements in the series. Okay, So s sub 2 is the sum of the first two elements uh, in the series. Um, and then s, or sorry, the first two terms, I should say. s sub 2 is the sum of the first two terms in the series. a1 and a2 are the first two terms. Uh, s sub 1 is the sum of the first one term, which is kind of a silly thing to say, but it, it's still true. Okay, just a1 by itself. Uh, s sub 3 is the sum of the first three terms, a1 plus a2 plus a3. And s sub k is the sum of the first k terms, a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus dot 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 plus a k. Okay? So um, now just real quick, you might be wondering, why don't we say s sub n? Well, we can't say s sub n because n is already being used here. Okay, we can't use that index to represent something else. This index n and this index k represent two different things. Okay, so we can't use them. We can't use the same variable for both of these because uh, these are two separate things here, so we can't represent them with the same thing. So just uh, be careful of that. So anyway, uh, that's all about sequences of partial sums. And just to recap real quick, we have the concept of a sequence that we talked about in the previous video. And remember, sequence is just a list, okay? And we also have the concept of a series. And remember, a series is a sum of the elements of the sequence, okay? So a series is a sum. And the series has two sequences associated with it. There's the sequence that actually tells you what the terms are. And then there's the sequence of partial sums, which is what we talked about in this video here. Okay, so that about wraps it up for sequences of series and what their differences are, uh, what a sequence is, what a series is, and what a sequence of partial sums is.